All right, in this last example of solving circular motion problems, this is a, the, probably the most difficult problem to solve a circular motion, and it's difficult in the math. Like, it, there's just a lot more work on some than a lot of the other circular motion problems, uh, and that is that when you have a diagonal in the problem, uh, it just, just gets a lot more hairy, but it's still the exact same process as always, just a little bit, uh, a few more steps. All right, so in this problem, we have a ball hanging on the end of the string, and it's just spinning around in a circle, but as you can see, it's kind of making this conical shape. Um, and so the string, let's say, has a length of 35 centimeters, or sorry, that's making an angle of 35 degrees, I apologize, and um, with respect to the vertical, and the length of the string is only 12 centimeters long. So the question is, is can you calculate the speed of the ball that would make this angle of... 35 degrees. All right, so we're going to start with the free body diagram. Of course, we have the force of gravity. Now, it's really important you draw the free body diagram at a good spot. So I'm actually going to draw at this point right here, okay, where we can look at all those forces. So at this point, we have force of gravity, and we also have the rope attached to it going this way. So we have tension going that way. Now, we always pause and we stop and say, okay, does this free body diagram make sense according to what we know? If it's going in a circle, it needs a net force towards the center of the circle. Now this time, a lot of students will say, yeah. And then we'll say, what is that net force? And they'll say, uh, the net force is tension, right? Because it's pointing towards the center of the circle. And a lot of students call this point right here at the center of the circle. If you're thinking that, that will definitely get you to get it wrong. So one of the things that we need to do is recognize the circle. The circle is down here, right? The center of this circle is a point right here, which is totally unconnected to any part of the ball or string. And so if this is going to really go in a circle, this has to have a net force horizontally over, not diagonally up, which is okay because if I look at this, there is a component that's up and there's a component that's over. So if net force needs to be perfectly horizontally over, that means that the vertical component should cancel out with that of the force of gravity. So before we go any further, we don't like diagonal forces. I want an up, down, horizontal, and vertical component of tension. So we're going to split that up. If you recall, we do that by drawing that force in a triangle format. We say there's a horizontal and vertical component. And with our angle here, with respect to the vertical, we should be able to split this up using trig. When we do our work correctly, the vertical component in this case becomes T cosine theta because the vertical component is adjacent to the angle theta and the horizontal component becomes T sine theta. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a working free body diagram, something without diagonals that I can work with. So I'm going to draw a new one over here. The force of gravity was not diagonal to start with, so we're all good with that guy. And so now we're just going to redraw this, but without the diagonal tension and instead just the vertical and horizontal components, which would be T cosine theta and T sine theta. And now it looks a little bit clearer and easy to work with. T cosine theta should equal force of gravity. These should cancel out. And hopefully I have a net force horizontally towards the center if it's going to go in a circle. So T sine theta is my net force. Now that I have a working free body diagram, I'm ready to start listing my variables. Uh, if I list everything that I have, we got it down here. Notice I don't have the mass of the object, and I suspect that that's going to be a problem, but hopefully it just magically disappears. So remember, if that happens, just put in an M wherever you need it and just keep on going. In fact, I don't have a lot of things. I don't have the radius. I want the speed. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like these are problems. Hopefully we can solve. I bet I can solve the radius right now. Let's looking at this, I know the length, specifically the length of this string. And so if I draw the radius here, the radius is this part right here, which is the base of this triangle right here. And so with this angle, I should actually be able to calculate the length of this line, the radius, knowing the hypotenuse, the length of the string. And so I can use trig uh, r equals l sine theta and then just plug chug and I now have the radius. So at least I have one additional variable that at first I was thinking, uh, you know, I usually need this variable. Uh, I need to go find it. So I've got one more. All I need now then is the mass and I should be able to solve for my speed. Let's make our equation. F net equals MA. The M is in red because we don't know it. And I think that's a problem and I'm hoping it just kind of disappears. So I'm going to replace F net in the horizontal direction, right, with the sum of all forces in the horizontal direction, which in this case is T sine theta. I replace A with 
centripetal acceleration, v squared over r, I get the following. Uh, now, from here, I think, okay, so I want to solve for speed, right? Let's take a look at what I got. I got r already, great, got that. M, don't know, that's a problem. Uh, hopefully it just disappears. I know theta, we're good. Tension, don't know tension. All right, so there's already quite a few things I don't know. I don't know speed, but I want it, so that's fine. I don't know mass and I don't know tension. I gotta get rid of some of these variables. Remember, one of the ways we do that, especially in diagonal problems, is that we usually not only use just an f net equals ma equation in the horizontal direction, but we also use one vertically. So I'm gonna create another equation vertically I know if it's going in a circle, the net force has to be horizontal, and that means it's not accelerating up or down. There should be no net force vertically. Therefore, t cosine theta equals force of gravity. And so horizontally, we're going to make a new equation. This is the one, sorry, this is the one horizontally. We're going to make a new one vertically. So the vertical equation is t cosine theta equals mg. Now from there, I can rearrange and solve for one of the ones I don't know. I don't know t, so let me solve for tension. Tension equals mg divided by cosine theta. Now that I know what tension is, do I really? No, because while I know g and theta, I don't know m, but that's okay. I'm just going to leave it just like this and take all this and substitute it in for t, and at least it'll get rid of one of the things I didn't know. Okay, so I'll plug it in for t, and in the place of t is now mg, sine, uh, mg over cosine theta, and this is what we've got. Now I'm going to rearrange this so that cosine, instead of being under this, is under this. Um, which is just fine math algebraically. And so sine divided by cosine is really just tangent. And so I'm only doing this just because it looks nicer and is easier to write out. So mg tangent theta, it was mv squared over r. I've got an m here, i got an m here. They're both red, I don't know them. These are the only things I don't know. That's okay, I can cancel them out. Uh, so after canceling these out, then I just got to do algebra and solve for v. When I do all that, I get the following. V equals the square root of gravitational field strength G times radius R times the tangent of the angle. Put, plug in numbers and I get my final answer of apparently 0.687 meters per second. Now, the process is the same as all the other ones. There are a few more steps. Remember, if you have diagonal forces, you gotta split them up before you solve, okay? And you may need multiple equations to finally get it. Something in the vertical, vertical direction and something in the horizontal before you finally get your final answer. Those are the only two tricks, but those tricks are the same that we used in regular force problems. So if that's what you're working on, then maybe you really understand the concept of circular motion, but maybe you just need to really work more on your force problems. Uh, you're welcome to check out some of the other videos that we have on solving force problems if that helps. Now let's take a look at the physics of the have versus the need. So. The question is, what would happen if the ball decreased its velocity? So we needed a velocity of, I can't remember the number, but 0.6 something, right, meters per second. Well, what if the ball all of a sudden, maybe air resistance or something, started slowing that ball down? What would happen? Well, on the need side, the speed would go down. The radius, I don't know, maybe stay the same. I, I really don't know yet, but let's just assume it's staying the same. And so if the velocity goes down and the radius stays the same-ish, then that means that I need less centripetal acceleration. So I need less force inwards, but I actually have, at the moment, plenty of force inwards, which this is a bit of a problem. So I need less, but I, I have more than what I had. So I need to get that have to go down if it's going to keep on going in a circle. Remember, the thing that's providing the force inwards is the horizontal component of tension. Tension is a reactionary force, so if I need less, it will just start pulling less. However, watch what happens. If I have the horizontal component shrink, well, this rope can't, right? Before it was going over this much, this, this force, this is the diagonal force here. The diagonal force was going over this much and up this much, and I just shrunk the horizontal part. So the, the whole diagonal force can't go in this direction anymore. The vertical component has to stay the same, otherwise the ball would fall downwards and that would be a problem. So this vertical component still has to equal the force of gravity, but my horizontal component is shrinking. What that means is my total force can no longer be in this particular direction and is now at a, a more vertical direction, right? 
where the horizontal component of this new diagonal is only this much and the vertical component is this much. Or in short, what that means is, is this angle would shrink and the ball would have to come in. Okay, so if it's shrinking, then that means that the radius, after all, isn't the same, right? Because if the angle goes down, it's actually getting closer. And so as a result, the radius will actually decrease a little bit. Now, the centripetal acceleration still did go down, um, but uh, th and these two are still going down, so it's still going to be enough that there must be apparently an overall amount going down. Uh, this is an interesting way to think about it if you're trying to figure out something like this. The have and the need kind of helps you think about the process of what would happen if I change some variables.